Fizzle's family. Today is Monday, March 16th, and this is my daily pastoral message while we maintain social distancing due to the coronavirus infection. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy, that no one is showing symptoms of the virus, and that we'll hopefully be together again both bodily and spiritually soon. However, as I'm sure most, if not all of us, have heard, the big news yesterday was that the CDC is recommending that we maintain social distancing and avoid being in groups of 50 or greater for an additional, or at least up to eight, eight weeks. This spans Holy Week and Easter, which is heartbreaking in many ways. I'm trying to think of ways that we can still worship together as a community at Easter, but do it in a safe way. And so I ask that uh, we pray that that may be so. Also, I ask that we continue to hold all those who are affected both in health and with financial fears and anxiety during this time that that God will see each of them and each of us through. For our uh, inspirational piece today, I turn to scripture, specifically Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, which was the epistle lesson for yesterday, for last Sunday. Uh, but it wasn't in the service yesterday, and so uh, it's just too good a passage to, uh, to let go unread. And so this is uh, from Paul's letter to the Romans, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 5. Therefore, we are justified by faith. Try again. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. These words, many of them, are very familiar to us. I find this passage one of the most inspiring in Scripture. One verse that is familiar but also inspiring is verse 8. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We didn't have to become perfect for Christ to give his life for us. Christ loves us. Christ sacrificed for us just the way we are. And because of that, we know that God's love for us is eternal, that Christ is on our side and God is on our side, and God will see us through even this time that we are separated. The middle part of that reading is particularly appropriate in this time while we are dealing with anxiety and dealing with fears. It helps to calm us. It helps to calm us because we 
can hear words that are encouraging, such as Paul wrote to the Romans. We also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, hope does not fail us, because God's love has been poured into us through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. And so as we hold each other in prayer, as we are separated in body but not in spirit, remember that God's love is present. God's love is made known to us through the Holy Spirit, made known to us because Jesus came to be with us, to love us, and gave his life for us. And so we will make, make it through this with God's help, because God gives us endurance, God gives us character, and God's love will give us hope that will not fail. Let's close together in prayer. Loving God, we thank you, O Lord, for your Holy Spirit that is poured into us, giving us hope, a hope that we know we can count on, a hope that will never fail us, for your love will never fail us either. Lord, we ask you to be with all those who are affected by this viral epidemic, this pandemic. Be with those who are receiving treatment and are working to recover from this illness. Be with the families who have lost loved ones and bring them hope for the future, O oh Lord. Be with our leaders as they work to provide a cure. Be with those who are suffering financially due to loss of jobs or inability to earn what they need to survive on. Help us be neighbors to one another, even in this time of social separation. Let us keep each other in our prayers and do what we can to be united at this time. For we know that you are still with us, still loving us, still caring for us, and that with your help, you will see us through. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I'll be talking to you again tomorrow. Remember that Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Linda and I will be in the office. Um, call if you have any questions, concerns, needs, or like to hear a, some words of encouragement, uh, not over Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we will see each other through this with God's help. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy. May God bless us all. Bye for now.